All right, let's talk about lenses. So the first thing to talk about is focal length. Focal length is essentially the amount of zoom in the lens. This lens is 50 millimeters. Focal lengths are normally in millimeters. Sometimes you'll see them in centimeters. So 50 millimeters here would be five centimeters. Not often though, it's usually millimeters. Now the lower this focal length number is, the wider the angle of view or the more wide angle the lens is, the higher the focal length number, the more zoomed in the lens is or the smaller the angle of view. There are two main categories of lenses. There are fixed focal length lenses like this 50 millimeter. It's a single focal length, meaning a single zoom level and you can't zoom in or out with it. And then there are zoom lenses like this one where you can change the focal length. This one is a 24 to 240 millimeter, which you can see listed right here. So focal length is literally the, the measurement from the front of the lens all the way to uh, the film plane or the digital image plane. So typically this kind of lens is called a prime lens with a single focal length, and this is a zoom lens. Now people often associate zoom lenses with telephoto lenses, but that's not quite right. Zoom and prime is separate from things like wide, standard, or telephoto. So for example, this is a wide angle lens. This is a 14 millimeter lens, and you can see there's one focal length, so it's a prime lens. You can't zoom in or out with it. And at 14 millimeters, if you are using a, what's called a full frame camera, which I'll talk about in a little bit, uh, then that is considered wide angle. Here we have a Tamron wide angle lens. Here you can see it's a 10 to 24 millimeter. So that's definitely wide angle. It's a, a low focal length number, but it's also a zoom lens. So I can zoom from 10 to 24 millimeters. Anywhere from about 30 millimeters to about 80 millimeters is considered what's called a standard lens. Now the 50 millimeter on a full frame camera or a 35 millimeter camera is considered a standard lens because 50 millimeters is essentially the same zoom level as the human eye. So it gives a very realistic portrayal in the photo of what you would actually see if you had been there. So the 50 millimeter is a standard prime. Now this is different from say this lens where it goes from 24 millimeters all the way to 240. So this would typically be called an all-in-one because it goes from a wide angle of 24 millimeters to a telephoto. Anything over about 80 millimeters is considered telephoto. So you can see it gets physically longer. So here we have a 70 to 300 millimeter. This is a telephoto lens, but it's a zoom telephoto. So I can zoom from 70 millimeters to 300 millimeters. And here we have a 135 millimeter lens, and this is a prime. So it's a telephoto prime because I can't zoom at all. You'll often see telephoto primes on the sidelines of sporting events like football because they offer uh, a nice crisp picture with their prime lens that doesn't have any elements moving around from uh, being able to zoom and it can let in a lot of light so it's gigantic. So the next thing you'll pretty much always see on lenses is the maximum f-stop performance which is usually portrayed as a one, a colon, and then uh, an a number and that number corresponds to the maximum f-stop setting that the lens can achieve. In this case it's 2.8. So f-stops are the settings for the aperture. The aperture is the iris inside the lens. So if you have, uh, uh, if you're at f2.8 then that means the iris is wide open. Now this lens has a aperture ring here which I can move and you can see it goes from f2.8 F4, F5, F6, all the way to F22. So if I'm here at F2.8, it's wide open. And if I close it down to F22, it gets much smaller. That's because the f-stop is actually a ratio between the diameter of that opening you see right there and the focal length of the lens. And that's actually the same reason why you see this one and a colon is because it's referring to that ratio. So in this case, it's saying that one means the focal length of the lens, meaning the physical length of the lens. And 2.8 refers to the diameter of this opening, meaning it, this distance right here, it takes 2.8 of those in order to go the length of the lens. If it's a zoom lens, then you're going to see a range of f-stops. So here you see 3.5-6.3. 
So what that means is, is that the maximum f-stop at 24 millimeters, which is the widest this zoom lens can do, is f3.5. And if you were at 240 millimeters, the maximum f-stop you can do is f6.3. Now, the actual size of the iris might not have changed when you do that. However, the length of the lens did. So the ratio changes. Remember, it's the ratio between the length of the lens, the focal length, and the diameter of the aperture opening. And lenses will always list their maximum aperture performance that they can achieve. So the other thing you'll always see is the manufacturer name. So here it's Tamron. Tamron is a third party lens manufacturer and they make lenses for different cameras. So if it's a Tamron or a Sigma lens, then you have to check what the mount is. In this case, it's a Nikon mount, but they also make ones for Canon and Pentax in this lens. A lot of the time you'll see the camera and lens manufacturers the same. So in this case, it's Minolta. This is a lens made by Minolta for a Minolta camera. Sometimes you'll see a co-manufacturer. So in this case, the main manufacturer is Sony. However, they have partnered with Carl Zeiss. So you have this Zeiss symbol and you also see Carl Zeiss on the lens here. Now Panasonic also does this with Leica. So sometimes you'll see Leica on their lenses. Both manufacturers get to benefit from this arrangement and that they get to share engineering information and they can market each other's products. Sometimes you'll see the lens mount also listed on the lens. So here, this is a Sony lens and Sony uses what they call the E mount for their mirrorless cameras. But here you see FE. So this is referring to the fact that it's a full frame E-mount lens. And I'll talk about full frame versus crop sensor in a moment. You don't always see an indication of the actual physical lens mount itself. What you'll see more often is an indication of whether or not that lens is intended for a crop sensor or a full frame. So to illustrate that point, here's a photo of a Fuji crop sensor camera, which has a smaller digital sensor versus a full frame digital Sony camera. And full frame is where the digital sensor is the same size as 35 millimeter film. The reason why it's the same size as that film is because 35 millimeter was the standard for many, many decades in the photography industry. So everything's still kind of based around that. Crop sensor cameras are nice in that they are physically tend to be a little bit smaller. Uh, they cost less because the sensor itself is physically smaller. But because of the physically smaller sensor, they can also make smaller lenses because the circle of light that's projected out the back of the lens doesn't have to cover uh, a big sensor. But if a lens is full frame, that means that the circle of light coming out the back is intended to cover the entire full frame sensor. So different manufacturers will have different designations for whether or not a lens is intended to go onto a cropped sensor or a full frame sensor or 35 millimeter film. For Pentax, for example, uh, FA means that it is a full frame lens. But on this lens, uh, it says DA, which means that it is intended for a cropped sensor camera. For Nikon, their lenses will say DX if it is intended for a crop sensor. And the designation for full frame is FX, but they don't actually list that on their lenses. So if the lens doesn't say DX and it's a full frame lens. For Canon, uh, EF means full frame and EFS means crop sensor. And Canon, actually, you cannot put crop sensor lenses onto the full frame camera without damaging the mirror mechanism if you try and, and use it. But with things like Nikon, Pentax, Sony, uh, you, can, you can use uh, crop sensor lenses on a full frame camera. It's just that you'll get vignetting or darkening in the corners. And there are modes on more advanced digital cameras where you can switch to a smaller resolution. So on pretty much every lens, you'll see a guiding mark or dot of some kind. So on the Pentax here, it's this red dot. Sometimes it'll be here. Sometimes it'll be on the surface of the mount, and sometimes it'll be at the base of the lens. And this is the mark that you use to line up with the dot on the camera in order to properly put the lens on. So when you see this little circle with a line through it and then a number, that's referring to the lens thread diameter. So on the front of the lens here, there's a screw thread for filters, and this is a certain diameter. And in this case, it's saying it's 58 millimeters. Sometimes you'll see this circle symbol with a line that's vertical, and sometimes you'll see it with a line that's angled. 
So that size also corresponds to lens caps and you'll often see the size inside the lens cap as well. So here you can see that same symbol in 58. It also refers to any kind of stepping ring you would use to uh, adapt a different size filter to a lens. So here you can see 49 to 52 millimeters, 55 to 58, and you can step up so that if you have a lens of one size but a filter of another, you can still use it. So a lot of the time after the millimeter is listed on the lens, you'll see other letters. These other letters usually refer to the autofocus system that is in place for the lens. And it can vary a lot by manufacturer and manufacturers will have multiple autofocus systems uh, that they've created and improved over the years. So whenever they come out with new autofocus systems, they'll give it a different letter designation. Other letters that come after the focal length can also refer to image stabilization, although each manufacturer calls it something different. So here OSS means optical stabilization system for this Sony. On Canon, it's IS or image stabilization. On Nikon, it's VR or vibration reduction. On uh, Tamron, it's VC, which is vibration compensation. So it really all refers to the same thing in that there's a glass element in the lens, usually in the back here, that's connected to a motor. And that glass element will shift depending on how the camera is moving to try to compensate for any kind of shakiness. So if you see a long set of numbers like this, that is the serial number for the lens. So it is the unique number for that lens. Sometimes it'll be on the front of the lens. Sometimes it'll be near the base and very difficult to read. And sometimes it'll even be on the metal part of the mount. Strangely enough, this Sony serial number actually seems to be put on with a sticker, which is just bad engineering. If you have an older lens, like for a film camera, then you will have an aperture ring. This aperture ring is the control you use to change the size of the iris, and the numbers on it uh, mean the different f-stops. So here on this lens, this has a maximum f-stop f2, which we can actually see right here, 1 colon 2. And it goes 2.8, f4, 5.6, f8, f11, 16, 22, and then it also has the letter a in green. Sometimes the lens will have just a green circle or something like that. I can push this button right here and move it to A and that means that this lens has the ability to let you control the aperture from the camera itself. And on older lenses like this the aperture is often controlled by a little lever here. Now also you'll see uh, focus distances which are these yellow and blue numbers right here. You'll see them on older film camera lenses like this, and you'll also see them on more modern lenses, sometimes even in a digital display. Blue numbers are feet, yellow numbers are meters, and essentially this orange marking is telling us, okay, if I put it here, that means whatever is four feet away from the camera is in focus. Now sometimes you'll also get a depth of field indicator, which is these series of numbers in between the aperture ring and the focus ring. So if you look, you can see it has 22, 16, eight, and four, and then mirrored on the other side around this orange mark. So essentially what this is telling me is what is going to be in focus. Depending on what your aperture setting is, you'll have different things in focus. So the lower the f-stop number, that means the larger the aperture, and the fewer things will be in focus, meaning you have a more narrow depth of field or the sliver of things that are in focus is smaller. Now, as you go up in f-stop number, it closes down your aperture and then you get more things in focus, both in front of and behind your focus point. So that's what this uh, guide is referring to. So it's saying, uh, let's say we're at f8 right now, which is what it's set to. So here I have an eight on this side and an eight on this side. So let's say my subject is six feet away and that's what I'm focused on. So then I can say that anything between about seven or seven and a half feet to about maybe five feet or five and a half feet will be in focus and anything beyond that in front of or behind that area will start to go out of focus. Now if I take it to the extreme and I say, well, I'm at F, 22 is my aperture, so a very small aperture. Then I got a 22 over here and a 22 over here. And if I put it in the same place at six, then that means anything almost to 15 feet and as far as four feet 
are now in focus. So lens manufacturers will often make a lens series that is their best of the best, the best they can offer. And they'll designate this usually with a letter, sometimes a uh, color indicator on the lens. For example, Canon has the L series, which is the red letter L will appear, and then a red ring will also appear on the lens. This indicates it's their, their highest quality series of lenses. Nikon will have a gold ring, and sometimes they'll have the letter N, uh, but that N actually refers to a nano crystal coating, which is a anti-glare coating on the lens, but they often go hand in hand. Sigma, for example, will have the art series, which they will designate with a silver letter A on the side of the lens. So different manufacturers will do different things. So you can always ask uh, whatever lens retailer you're buying from, is this uh, their high-end series of lenses? Sometimes the lens will also talk about the lens coating. So for example, on this Sony Zeiss lens, you see this T-star, and that T-star is something you always want to see. It's talking about coatings on the lens to help reduce glare, which is basically light going where you don't want it to go. Occasionally you'll have a lens that shows the minimum focusing distance, meaning the closest it can possibly focus. So here for this 55 millimeter lens is half a meter or 1.64 feet. Here on this Sony zoom lens, here's the minimum focusing distance. It's saying half a meter, 1.64 feet to 0.8 meters or 2.63 feet. And that means that at 24 millimeters, this is the minimum focusing distance and at 240 millimeters that's the minimum focusing distance sometimes you'll get a specialty lens like a macro lens and it will say macro or in the case of a nikon lens it will say micro so a macro lens is different in a few ways one of the main ways is different is that it can focus at much closer distances than a normal lens can now also in macro lenses sometimes you'll see with the distance measurements You'll see these other numbers so here there's 25 10 5 4 and eventually it goes all the way down let's see 1.2 to 1. so this is the magnification ratio meaning it's talking about the size of the physical object that you're photographing versus the size of the image projected out the back of the lens when you're at one that means a ratio of one to one so the object like say a b its physical size is the same physical size as the image being projected onto the digital sensor or film. If it was at a magnification ratio of two, so that's a one to two ratio, that means the B is its regular size and the image projected off the back is half the size of that B. Now, most macro lenses have a maximum magnification ratio of one to one. However, there are some that do crazy stuff like there's one lens I saw that does a five to one which basically makes it a, a kind of microscope it means that the image is five times the size of the actual object you're photographing now speaking of focusing you'll often see on older lenses uh, here you see this middle marking meaning that's where you're focused at but there's also this red dot or some type of red marking that's just a little off and that red marking is actually your indicator for focus if you're shooting with infrared film because infrared wavelengths of light are longer and so they focus at a different spot than visible wavelengths of light. So to sum up, if we look at a lens we haven't looked at yet, we can tell a lot about it. So here I can see it's an 85 millimeter. It's a single focal length, so it's fixed. It's not a zoom. 1.4, that means the maximum f-stop this can achieve is 1.4. And you can see it's a very, very large lens that can let in a lot of light. Also see the ratio 1 colon 1.4. These letter designations refer to things that are just for Rokinon. So like UMC here, I believe, refers to a coating. You can see it's made by Rokinon there. I can see my distance measurements, feet and meters. I also have my depth of field guide right here. My aperture ring, which tells me which aperture I'm on. And then if I look super carefully, I can see a serial number etched right there. I can see my guiding mark right here. I can see that my thread size is 72 millimeters. And that's really about all I need to know. So if this video helped you out, go ahead and give me a thumbs up and subscribe to Prime Studios for more photography videos. And leave a comment below if you have any questions. And thank you for watching.